I'm going to go ahead and start that now. But uh, so I want to start us off with a question. And uh, here, here it is. I'll give you a moment to chew on it before you answer. But what has helped you spiritually talking for a moment? What has helped you uh, over the last couple of weeks get through your difficult moments? What has helped you get through your difficult moments? Maybe it's a favorite portion of scripture and you'd be willing to share that. Maybe it's uh, a song and you'll sing it. No, you don't have to sing it, but you could, you could, uh, although if you want to, we're open to that tonight. Uh, but, but you could tell us the song and maybe a piece of that song, like, hey, the chorus says, and this is why it's ministered to me. So I, I just want to, I want to give you an opportunity. I want to hear from you. Uh, what has helped you uh, over the last couple of me last couple of weeks in your difficult moments? And listen, my difficult moment li might look different than your difficult moments. So I just want to keep it general and difficult moments. But what has helped you? What has blessed you? What has encouraged you? What has strengthened you? Um, well, for me, I like I said, I've said before in some of our other Zoom meetings that I've been kind of, I've been struggling a little bit with, you know, the circumstances with everything being on technology and I've been down on different days, but there's a song that I really like, um, like upbeat, um, like upbeat, like kind of fast paced Christian songs. And there's one um, by Sidewalk, I think it's Sidewalk Prophet, mm -hmm. who sings it, and it's called Smile. And it's like basically saying when you think you can't smile, like when you think you can't do it, just smile, um, and get up and dance and um, that you have, there's something good to look for. Um, that usually puts me in a pretty good, but like, that helps. And I mean, there's a couple other ones that, that I like that are like that too, but that's one of my favorite go-to songs when I'm feeling down. Excellent. Thank you. Who else? Um, I think, I think, uh, our words of encouragement and even during the sermon, um, you say, fix your eyes upon Jesus mm. and I'm more of the old fashioned Christian hymns. So I have a tendency to sing, um, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Oh. In fact, when I go to bed at night after I'm done praying, um, I actually sing that. And then I, I fall asleep. That's great. I love that one. I, I quote that one a lot. Even Sundays yeah. sometimes I'll, I'll quote the couple of lyrics to that. So that was good. Yeah. yeah. We did some grocery shopping today and on our way to the store, they played Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Ah, uh, boy, I was just singing that one. That was great. I, I, love, I love those old choruses and things. But the gentleman who wrote that song, today's his birthday. He was, he was born in like 1839. But he's actually born in Pennsylvania. And, oh, okay. uh, he wrote that one and, and several others they mentioned. And, and right, right now, I, I don't remember all of them. But anyway, so in honor of that, they played, uh, he, not him singing it, but they played, <laughs> they played that song. So that was kind of fun. Was, yeah. But thanks for sharing that. That's great. Yeah. I do like the older Christian song. That's just me. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. When we youth and children's pastored a long time ago, I was the worship leader and that was in a more traditional church. So we sang a lot of the hymns and the very old choruses. So I've grown to love those and my wife grew up in that church. So uh, they're, they're part of our, those old choruses are part of our DNA. We love it. Yeah. You know, the other thing I thought of, too, is, is two children's song, um, Jesus Loves Me. <laughs> yeah. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And yeah. I've been kind of singing that, too, like, you know, as I'm going about doing whatever I'm doing. So Great but truths those. Those songs. Great truths. Yeah. So. Who else? What what else have you has has been helping you in your difficult moments? You don't have a difficult moment. 
Come on, you don't have any difficult moments. You gotta give me your uh you're gonna give me your your uh, recipe for success, your secret for success. I've had some. Uh I'll share my scripture in a minute though, but um well, in the spring, uh, I, I just love the spring. So the spring picks me up. And even through this pandemic, uh, but um, of course, I'm, I'm, I'm not in quarantine. I'm working. So, but uh, the, the moon, the moon last night was incredible. It's going to be incredible tonight. Uh, the sea, the, the sea creation, uh, especially in the springtime, the eggs, the, the baby ducks are hatching. I see the little duck parades going around here and there. And uh, this morning we saw our first hummingbird out by our feeder. And uh, just uh, the blessings, the little nuggets of the blessings yeah. of uh, what, what God has created for us. That's but wonderful. I've just really been leaning on uh, um, not being afraid, not living in fear. Right. Li living, living, knowing that he is taking care of us. Mm. Yeah. Um, that, that's uh, trust, trust, and and not be afraid. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's real good. Anybody else? Uh, Sandy just put in the chat box. So let me take a moment and read that uh, in one of my devotionals that I am reading. Many times it was uplifting words about being in a hopeless situation and how the Lord knows everything that is going on and he'll see us through. It seemed like it was written for times like now for what we're going through. It reminded me that the Lord is in control. That's great, Sandy. Thank you for sharing that. It does, you know, God can use any situation and remind us of his presence, whether it's nature and we see the birds or the moon or whatever it is, great reminders uh, of, of his creation. Or God can use, obviously, his word, the Bible, or God right. can take the words of devotion. Somebody read a devotional or, some, excuse me, someone wrote and use those in, in just a timely, uh, timely fashion. I was just reading an Old Testament scripture a couple of days ago. Uh, had nothing to do with any pandemic. It had nothing to do with people, you know, being, but I thought to myself, I and I don't even remember what verse it is right this minute, but I read it and I thought, boy, what a timely scripture for right now, you know, uh, but God can do that. He can take those kind of things and just minister to our heart in, in a moment, uh, in a flash. So anybody else before we open our Bible tonight, anybody else, what, what have you what has helped you get through tough times? Well, if you think of one, feel free to, to share it or, or put it in the chat box. But if you have a Bible, take it out to Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter number 46. Bible there. Psalm chapter number 46. And I'm just going to, well, it's only 11 verses. I'll read the whole chapter. It's not very long. Uh, Psalm chapter number 46 and beginning in verse number one. And I'm, I'll just start reading there. And like I said, it's 11 verses and then we... Um, we'll talk about it for a few minutes. Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountain fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God and the holy place where the most high dwells. God is within her, and she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought to the earth. He makes wars Cease to the ends of the earth. 
He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Hmm. This is a portion of scripture that I have been in and out of uh, for the last six or seven weeks, and I have really enjoyed it. It is There's a couple that I have go back to um, throughout the course of the last three weeks, but this seems to be the psalm that I, I keep coming back to the most. And there's two... I love the whole thing. Obviously, it's God's word, but there's two pieces of this that really just kind of grip me. And the first one is at the beginning of the chapter where it says, God is our refuge and our strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. We're not seeing literal mountains falling right now. We're not seeing the earth give way, at least not in the United States, but with all of the things going on with the pandemic and everything associated with that, for many, it feels like the earth or the mountains are falling and the earth is giving way. Mm -hmm. Uh, But it doesn't even have to be pandemic related. You know, as I was talking to Rose this afternoon, talking about Bill, I was reminded of this scripture in the moment. Rose probably feels like the earth is giving away and the mountain is falling. She's got a huge situation in front of her and she doesn't know how to handle it. She's Mm -hmm. got this dilemma that my husband, who I've been married to for a long time, is not well and I can't be with him. Mm -hmm. And and that is life altering. That that is that is difficult. There isn't even the right word, but we'll just use it for the moment. And yet. God is our refuge and our strength. Right. I want to encourage you tonight, uh, because listen, if you're human, you, go, you have tough times. Uh, mm-hmm. Sometimes it's mentally. So, sometimes it's a battle that just rages in our mind. Sometimes it's physically. Uh, we did too much outside, or we're, we're, we're getting, uh, feeling the effects of you know, life just taking its toll on our physical body. Uh, sometimes it's spiritual. There's a, just a battle that's that's taking place, whether it's the enemy or uh, whether we're just kind of fighting that old nature that keeps trying to rear its ugly head. It, it doesn't matter what the battle is, but you and I can find God in the middle of every battle. You and I can find God in the middle of every storm. And I want to encourage you tonight when you're in the midst of that battle, whether you're going through it today or you were in it last week or you might be in it next week, when you're in that battle, know that God is there. Know that God is with you. He is your refuge and your strength and ever-present help in trouble. Not a mostly present help when he's not busy doing something else, not uh well you asked him to help you last week you got to figure out this week on your own he's your ever present help in time of trouble and your trouble might look different than my trouble your trouble might be uh you know it, it doesn't matter what your trouble is again there's no categories or classification god is your ever present help in time of trouble i hope that that brings some peace to your spirit when you're going through those. Uh, I often think of that story of Peter. Uh, He's in the boat with the rest of the disciples and they're in the middle of the lake and the strong winds and the storms are coming and Jesus comes out to meet them and he's walking on the water. And when they first glance at him, they think it's a ghost. Right. And they're terrified. And, And Peter calls out. And again, I'm just paraphrasing, but Peter calls out and he says, uh, Or Jesus calls out and says, it's me. And Peter says, well, Jesus, if that's really you, then allow me to come out. And Jesus says, come on out. And, and or excuse me, Peter takes the step out of that boat and he recognizes in the midst of the storm that Jesus is right there. And what happens when his eyes are fixed on Jesus, Peter is able to walk on that water. He's, he's able to uh, tune everything out. Uh, Donna quoting that song, may the things of this earth grow strangely dim. 
-hmm. in the light of his glory and grace. He, he had his eyes locked on Jesus and, and he was walking on water. He was able to withstand the wind and the waves. In that moment, those wind and waves were still raging. They were still raging. They had not been calmed yet. Uh, one time I heard, it I heard it taught that as soon as Peter's foot hit the water, that the storms went away. Uh, that, that's not what happened. Peter walked on water in the midst of the storm. And it wasn't until he got his eyes off of Jesus that he began to sink. Right. And then Jesus pulled him up. And if I'm remembering correctly, and if I'm not, someone can certainly correct me. But uh, it wasn't until they got back into the boat that the wind and waves died down. Right. And I think we miss that detail sometimes. That when Peter walked on water, we criticize him. Hey, I've done it myself. He, he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink and what a knucklehead and, you know, all this sort of stuff. But he walked on water in the midst of the storm. Mm -hmm. And that was only possible because he recognized Jesus was right there. He kept his eyes fixed. He recognized that in that moment, he was his ever-present help. And think of the courage and faith that it took to even just take that first step out. You know? We want to, I, I like to, and I say we, but I'll, I won't include, I won't include you. I'll throw myself under the bus. Uh, I want to get to the walking on water part. I, I want to get to the fact that he, he began to sink and Jesus rescued him. But what about the faith, courage, and trust it took to take that first step out of the boat? Because mm -hmm. he believed Jesus. He took him at his word. Come, come to me, Jesus said to Peter that moment. Come to me. And, and that took every bit of faith that Peter had to take that step out. And I believe that you and I have been given that same ability in the midst of your storm, whether it's COVID-19 or whether it's a financial storm or it's a marital storm or it's a relational storm or whatever it might be. In the midst of all of that, God, your ever-present help. Jesus is standing there saying, come, come, I'm right here. We'll get through this together. You know, sometimes when we're human, <laughs> we like to think that I can get this, but God's there as my backup. So if my plan fails, I can always ask God to forgive me. And then, Lord, what do you want me to do? Um, that would be like Peter just thinking it was the ghost and trying to walk out and meet the ghost. No, nope. he needed to verify that that was Jesus. He, he needed to hear those words of the Lord. You and I need to do that before we take our first steps, too. Rather than being reactive, we need to call on him first. And then when he gives us that okay, when he says, come to me, and then we know that we can face that storm, uh, whatever it may look like all around us. And, and there's some great illustrations as you continue to read through that portion of scripture. And I would encourage you to do that, but I'm going to skip down then to the last um, the last three verses, verses 9, 10, and 11. He, God, he makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. The Lord Almighty, excuse me, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob, our fortress. And, you know, I started in verse number nine because it just gives us a glimpse, just gives us a piece of the power that God has. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and he shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. God, God is almighty. He is all powerful. There is nothing that he does not have control and dominion over. Why does he allow the things he allows? I, I don't know. We'll, we'll never know the answer to some of those things, but to be reminded that he is all powerful. If he wanted to, he could just speak the, speak the word and anything that he speaks against can be obliterated. I mean, it's just God. It's who he is. It's the power that he has. But he says in verse number 10, for us to be still and know that he is God. Be still and know that he is God. 
I just want to ask you, and you don't have to answer this, but when was the last time you've been still? When was the last time that you just purposed yourself to be still? Monday morning, I got up and I felt like a train wreck. Not quite sure why that is, and we could get into that, but that's not important right at the moment. But I felt like a train wreck. And uh, I was like, oh, Lord, I could use about another six hours of sleep. That's what it felt like. And I'd really love to just cancel everything on my agenda for today. But I decided, despite all of that, I grabbed my cup of coffee and uh, popped in my earbuds and went on to YouTube to look for a song that I was thinking in my head would be good for a moment just like that. I accidentally clicked the wrong song. That's how tired I was. I didn't have my glasses on. I could read it, but I think that was a God-ordained mistake. I clicked the wrong song, and there was a song that came on, and I just got lost in his presence for that moment. And, you know, in the moment, physically, I didn't feel any better. I still felt pretty run down and ragged, but on the inside, in my spirit, boy, it was like a 180. I just, the Lord knew what, he knew what I needed. He knew the words to that song. Right after that song was over, I just began to praise him in, in, in prayer and, and thank him. And then I got in and I read the word for a few moments, but it was just, it, it was just incredible what happened. But I never would have experienced that had I not been still. I never would, the Lord would not have had that opportunity to create that moment in my heart if I had not sat down and stopped and, and just let him be God. And, and I love not only the line that be still and know I'm God, but I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. To me, that is just a gentle but powerful reminder of who God is. You know, one day, the scripture teaches us, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Hmm. And we know that, but I don't think we recognize the power that that statement holds and the bigness Bigness. I don't know if that's a word. Uh, just how big that statement really is and what that means for every person uh, who one day will bow and confess that Jesus is Lord. But he says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And so I just want to encourage you tonight. We have a few minutes left before we get off, but I just want to encourage you um, Again, not just because of the pandemic, not just because of everything going on. We, we have storms in our life, no matter what the cause or root or uh, whatever those situations might be. But remember that God's your refuge and your strength. You do not have to do this on your own. You don't have to crumble either. You don't have to crumble. Even if you're on your own and you're living in a situation where it's just you, you, you do not have to face this by yourself, and you don't have to crumble under the weight of it or the bigness of it or wh whatever emotions or feelings you might be feeling. You don't have to crumble under this. God is your refuge and your strength, and he will be exalted. So our directive is to be still and let him be God. You know, in that short story that I share with you from Monday, uh, if the Lord wouldn't have intervened in that moment, I have no, uh, no clue, but like I said, I just, I was, I was not doing well. It just wasn't a great start to the day, but he just flooded my spirit and my soul. Didn't make me feel better physically, but it did something inside of me. It did something spiritually. It did something deep in my soul. Uh, he he br breathed a, a breath of, of his fresh air uh, into my lungs and into my spirit. And he just changed the atmosphere in that moment. And so he will be exalted. Maybe you've experienced something like that, even if your details are a little bit different. But maybe you've just had that moment where, whether it was in desperation because you've tried everything else, or whether it was similar to my story, or maybe it was just you sought him first. It doesn't matter where, but 
maybe you've experienced his presence that, boy, it was so overwhelming and refreshing. It was just a God-ordained moment that he just came in and filled, him, filled you up with himself, with his Holy Spirit. And when we will take that time to be still and not just know that he's a, not, not just know that he's God, but allow him to be God. Allow, I know that sounds like a funny statement. What do you mean allow him to be God? Well, you know, sometimes we're good at pushing God out. God, I've got this figured out. I know what I need. I know what, you know, just give me coffee. Give me 10 minutes of reading your word and I'm good for the day. Well, no, you know what? Sometimes we need some more of that. We need some more Jesus. We need to allow him to do what it is that he wants to do. Um, because, you know, maybe, maybe a cup of coffee and 10 minutes in the word does well for you, but maybe God has more for you. Maybe God desires to give you infinitely more, uh, mm -hmm. immeasurably more more than you even ask, more than you could even desire, more than you could even think. And so we just need to allow him to be God, not just know that he's God. So I hope that and trust that you're encouraged tonight by the scripture. God has not left you. He's not forsaken you. He's not turned his back on you. But he is our ever-present help in time of need. He is our refuge and our strength. When you feel like you've got nothing left, you, you, may, you may be right physically, but God has more to pour into you. God has a breath of fresh air to breathe into your heart and into your spirit, into your mind, and he desires to do that. If you and I would be still and know that he's God and be still and allow him to be God in your life. So I trust that the word, his words will encourage you. I trust that his words will strengthen you. And, and I trust that you'll respond in an appropriate manner. If you've not taken the time to be still, then I would encourage you to take the time and be still. And not just take the time, but make the time. Make the time. Because if you're just looking for a free few moments, you, you, might be, you might be searching for a while. But when you just take the time and say, you know what? Everything else can wait. Everything else can wait. There was a, d a day, a couple of, I don't know, maybe it was last week. Every, every day feels like it's running together. I don't know about you, but it feels that way for me sometimes. But I thought to myself, oh, I didn't do this, I didn't do this, and I didn't do this. And the Lord reminded me, guess what? Tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day. You don't have to kill yourself today to get those three things done. Tomorrow is another day. Right. It was almost like he was giving me permission to just stop and rest physically because I needed it, but also to take a break and just allow him to be God. So thank you all for being here tonight. I appreciate it. It's good to see all of you all. And uh, it's good to know that things are well and encourage you to continue to pray for those prayer requests that were mentioned. And I'm going to be putting out a video probably on Saturday just with a few updates as we continue to move forward. So be looking for that. And we'll be excited to join with you again on Sunday as we worship together. And, uh, you know, be praying for this whole situation. We've begun talking about what reopening might look like. So we would appreciate your prayer in that. But we also need to pray that this will happen soon because we really like to be able to get together with you sooner than later. Obviously, there's a lot of things that play into that. But Certainly ask for your prayers for my wife and myself and church leadership as we consider, as we pray, as we think, as we plan about what reopening looks like. And so let me close us in a quick word of prayer. And if you want to stay for a few minutes and hang out and chat, we can do that. And if you need to go, then I want to be respectful of your time. Father, thank you for, again for tonight. Just ask that you'd be with us now. Take this word, it's your word, God and accomplish in my heart and in the hearts of those who are with us tonight. Accomplish in our heart what you desire to be accomplished. Help, help us to, re, uh, to remember, Lord, that you are a refuge in our time. And excuse me, you are a refuge and you are our strength. You are ever, help, ever present help in time of need. And Lord, help us to remember in the midst of it all to be still and know that you're God. Bless these folks this evening. Be with them, lead, guide, and direct them, and be with the rest of our church family as well, Lord. We'll thank you and we'll praise you. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.